Coffee. I want to welcome you on the behalf of St. Mary's College, on behalf of the Center for the Regional Economy, on behalf of our Graduate Business Alumni Office, to our Economic Crisis Panel today. Um, I know that there are, are um, a number of alumni in the audience. And I want to thank you for coming, along with the um, members of the community, current students, faculty and staff from St. Mary's College. We have quite a diverse crowd here. Um, first of all, I wanted to start off by saying, by noting that we do um, have a lot of alums in the audience and um, that there, we have over 4,000 alumni from our business programs at St. Mary's College. And these are graduate business alumni, I want, I want to say. And this represents the type of activity, the panel today, that we hope to continue to have to serve our alumni network, both in um, the community and for our growing alumni base in the San Francisco Bay Area and Sacramento. And I also want to take a moment to thank Jackie Williams. Jackie, over here, red coat. <laughs> Jackie is our Director of Marketing and Graduate Business Alumni Outreach, and um, she has done so much of the work organizing this event. And Jackie will be here to answer questions uh, that you might have about the Alumni Network and about the growing number of degree programs that St. Mary's offers um, here on campus, in the East Bay, the South Bay, uh, San Francisco, and in Sacramento. A little bit about the Center for the Regional Economy. I'm director of the center and that it has been created to support um, our vital local economy um, to, through sponsored research, outreach, student internships, and programs such as this. And you can see the back of the program for a little bit more information about the center and feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Um, a little bit about the panel today. We've brought together an impressive array. It certainly is large. It's an uh, <laughs> impressive array of faculty from the School of Economics and Business to, to comment on the current economic situation from, from a variety of perspectives. Um, certainly, the timing is excellent. I believe um, Bernanke is giving his talk to Congress today, and the President is speaking tonight to the joint session of Congress, and I'm sure he will have a lot to say about the economy, so we're just ahead of them entirely. <laughs> You're going to get it all right here. Um, the format is going to be pretty fast-paced because we have a number of people and we want to give you time for questions. Um, each panelist knows that he or she has just five minutes, and our moderator is going to enforce that limit. So we will have time at the end for questions from you. Um, panelists will have a chance um, right before your questions for any brief clarifications, but we aren't going to be having, um, we don't have time for extended discussion amongst the panelists unless, of course, it happens in response to your questions. So we're looking for some really good questions. Um, if I could ask you, please remind you all to turn off your cell phones, beepers, blackberries, all those kind of fun sorts of things. That's when all the heads drop, right? <laughs> and um, and so at this point, it is my pleasure to introduce our moderator and first speaker, um, Roy Allen, who is Dean of the School of Economics and Business. Um, Dean Allen has been at St. Mary's since 1985, just as long as I have, so been around a while. And he specializes in international economics and finance, and he has published two highly respected books on international finance. And he is going to start off with a brief discussion of a bit of history of financial crises in the United States to provide a little bit of background to our discussion today. And he is also going to be the keeper of the clock. So, Roy, the floor is yours. Thank you, Professor Chase. We will focus today on the impacts and responses or solutions of the U.S. and global financial crisis rather than a detailed understanding of how it happened. So let me give you an overall update. How severe is this situation? And based on historically similar crises, is it likely to get worse? A good historical data set has only been available uh, recently. It actually goes back over about eight centuries, which is very new for us as economists to, to have. Carmen Reinhardt and Kenneth Rogoff are the two economists that have been releasing this data. 
And they find that since 1800, the percentage of years that advanced economies have spent in what they call severe banking crises has been 7.2% of the time. Emerging economies have been in severe banking crises since 1800, 8.3% of the time. Where, and those numbers only changed to 7% and 10.8% in the time period since 1945. So their results indicate that this current crisis was actually overdue in terms of average historical frequency in advanced economies such as ours. Furthermore, since World War II in the advanced world and the developing economy world, we have, gotten, we have not gotten any better at avoiding severe banking crises such as this one. Okay. So using their data set to include the Great Depression and 14 other more recent severe banking crises, these two economists find that the average historical impact on major macroeconomic statistics is not unlike what could very easily result from the current crises. There are common patterns here. From peak of the boom to trough of the crisis, the average historical results are as follows. House prices declined 36% over five years from the peak of the boom to the, what we'll call the trough for a moment. Equity prices, stock market prices, decline 56% over about 3.4 years. Unemployment rates increase 7.0 percentage points over 4.8 years from the, the peak or, of the boom to where things start to bottom out, if you will. I shouldn't say that unemployment rates bottom out. I should say that the productive work effort of the economy bottoms out as a trough. GDP per person declines 9.3% over 1.9 years. So, so not only is there good historical data on the large macroeconomic impacts of these major statistics, but there's some sense of how long those statistics will, will go down or up. Um, of course, those are averages. Uh, obviously, including the Great Depression in this historical data set is a little bit of an outlier. Uh, unemployment rates increased 20 percentage points rather than the seven during that episode. Okay. However, declines in house prices and equity prices to date during this crisis, since the peak of the boom in, let's say, 2006, in many countries are similar to the historical averages of a 36% and 56% decline in house prices and equity prices. The World Stock Market Index at the moment, uh, as of February 19th at least, uh, give us another few days and it may change. Uh, from the end of 2007, the World Stock Market Index was down 51% compared to the 56 percent that has been average. Okay. The U.S. stock indices are down a little over 45 percent, so the U.S. equity prices have already fallen very similar to the average of, of the severe banking crises of this century. The U.S. Case-Shiller House Price Indices, which is a fairly new comprehensive indice, is down uh, for house prices in this country approximately 30 percent, another 5 percent or so, and then, and then we are there in terms of historical averages. So if the asset price declines get a little bit worse over the next year or two, then we have ourselves an average severe banking crisis asset price decline. <laughs> In this average severe banking crisis scenario, the U.S. unemployment rate, which has risen quickly, as you know, toward 8% in the last few months, the official national rate, would need to rise to approximately 11 to 12%. And peak, or the productive work effort, would trough 
in the next two to three years to realize that 7.0 percentage point increase from levels of 4 to 5 percent in 2006, which would be enough to generate that average cumulative decline of 9 to 10 percentage points in real GDP from the start of the recession in December 2007 in this country. So these are the large macroeconomic impacts of the crisis so far in the U.S. And perhaps this is the safest set of predictions for the next year or two, safe as an economist, because they assume the average values from a large sample of similar situations. Perhaps pessimists can be defined as those who expect worse than these forecasts of average similar situations and optimists as those who expect better. So I look forward to hearing more detail from our panelists, including on what we can do to secure a sustainable trough on the way to recovery in the U.S. and globally. So to continue with this metaphor, I looked up trough in my new Webster's Dictionary, you know, the one that's about this thick. And it tells me that a trough is a vessel, generally rather long and not very deep, for holding water, foodstuff for animals, and the like. So far, the trough that has been tried in this country in the last couple of years, the one that we feed from, has had leaks. But then history tells us, with the help of an eighth-century-old data, that we struggle and yet, as others have struggled in times of severe banking crisis, history tells us that we're likely to stop most of those leaks within a year or two. So let's see what our panelists have to say about that.